I like the unicorn. <laughs> Well, that was a movie. Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my first thoughts on The Fall Guy, the new film starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt, and was directed by David Leitch, who has also directed Bullet Train, Deadpool 2, but was probably even better known for his stunt coordination and stunt work. Before that, he was a producer on John Wick, stuff like that. He is a very well-known and appreciated stunt performer, director, all of that, and is directing his own movies now. He also did Hobbs and Shaw. I... I'm a big fan of his stunt coordination. I wasn't really a big fan of any of his movies until Bullet Train. I really did enjoy Bullet Train. It surprised me. I went in thinking it was going to be okay, and then it was actually pretty good in my mind. I've talked about that already. I did a first thoughts on that movie already where I said there were some issues. It was a little too long, a little too complicated, a little muddled by the end of the film, but the stunt coordination was great. The acting was awesome. The directing was was good and the comedy was hilarious. I really enjoyed that movie despite not enjoying Hobbs and Shaw and not really being a big fan of Deadpool 2 either. So he won me over with that movie and I at the time was excited to see whatever he was going to do next. Then the trailer for The Fall Guy drops and I go, wow, this looks pretty bad. <laughs> it doesn't look good. It's not going to be any good. And then you see, oh, it's directed by David Leach. I'm like, ah, man. I guess I have to see it. I guess I have to give him the benefit of the doubt and go watch it because I didn't think Bullet Train looked that good either based on the trailer. So maybe he's just not good at making trailers, but his movies are pretty good now. And I will say this movie's better than its trailer. The trailer is kind of misleading. If you've seen this trailer or if you don't know what this movie's about or anything, the trailer makes it out that there is a stunt guy played by Ryan Gosling who is in love with the director on the movie. He's working on, played by Emily Blunt, and no matter what he does, he can't seem to get her attention. He just wants to win her over. It very much felt like a Ken Barbie thing again. I'm like, oh no, Ryan Gosling is falling into a new typecast because of Ken. And I love Barbie. It was a great movie, and I loved Ryan Gosling in it, but I don't want him to keep doing that. But anyway, the lead actor for the film that he's working on gets kidnapped, it seems, so he goes on an action-packed adventure trying to save him and bring him back and there are elements of that story in this story but the trailer is totally off base on a couple of different ways it is not remotely a he's infatuated and in love with her and she doesn't even notice him type storyline this movie was completely different than how that trailer made that relationship look and then also i wouldn't really say this movie is a huge action-packed adventure there's there's a good amount of action in it i'm not saying that there's not but this movie is kind of for a good portion of it a little bit of a slow burn building up and there's a mystery involved and it's kind of got some plot twists to it and there might be some things that you're like oh how why is this happening let me try and figure it out it's not just big explosions and punches and everything the trailer made you believe it is so i was happy about that i was happy this movie wasn't what the trailer said it was because the trailer looked terrible this movie is slightly better than that trailer, but I still wouldn't say it was great either, and there's a myriad of reasons why. First, I do want to talk about the good things, because there are some good things in this movie. At the end of the day, I enjoyed aspects of this movie. One, Ryan Gosling, love him. Pretty much love him in everything I've seen him in, if not literally everything. He's usually good, and he makes his character that is overall pretty bland and forgettable into something a little bit more memorable and interesting just simply by being Ryan Gosling. Like the character isn't really anything you haven't seen before, nothing in this movie is, but the cast made it the best of it, you know, because so it's not just Ryan Gosling, like I said, Emily Blunt's in it, Aaron Taylor Johnson's in it, Stephanie Sue's in it, uh, for a pretty small role, and it's like these actors are good enough that they are elevating basic to bad roles into something a little bit more interesting and a little bit more memorable, even if the writing isn't allowing for that. Now, of course, so the stunt work, as in all David Leach movies, is good. Was it as good as Bullet Train? Not really. Um, there was a lot of it, to be fair though, I should rewatch it because a lot of it I was like, well that was CGI. I'm kind of surprised that they CGI'd that because, you know, David Leach is known for doing it for real, doing real stunts. 
why was that CGI then? That's a disappointment. But then during the credits, they had a very interesting segment where they were showing the behind the scenes of all of these stunts. And a lot of stunts that you could clearly see were CGI'd were actually performed as well. And so that's disappointing to me because I'm like, that was a cool stunt that they did. But then I guess for whatever reason, they CGI'd it too to make it look better or something. And it was very disappointing because that stunt work in the in the credits was more interesting than the some of the stuff f some of the final product we got and i'm not saying all of it was cgi but there was some stuff that i was definitely bored by because it looked so fake and then it was actually actually performed and granted they did alter it and change it in post production so i do want to rewatch that and see how much of it actually was done because what was done was impressive the final product wasn't always though some of it looked weird but hey that end credit sequence was amazing and i wish the whole movie looked as cool as that part did so the stunt work what of it you can still see in the film is great it is good but I, I i was a little disappointed some of the stunt work i've seen in his other movies like bullet train for example or john wick is better than in this, but it's still very good in this. That's about it. There's some jokes that are really good. I referenced the unicorn in the opening. There's a joke a bit, because it's kind of a continuing joke. It's not like a recurring joke or anything. It's not even really a callback, because it's, it's more than just one joke, because it lasts for like two scenes, but uh, it's actually legitimately funny, and it was the first thing that made me really laugh in this movie. And there's a few jokes in this movie that are very funny, but... A majority of the humor in this movie simply does not land, and as best as I can characterize it, is mom humor. And I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense, I'm sorry if that doesn't really communicate the point, but I don't know how better to put it in that it's just mom humor, where maybe your mom won't find it funny, maybe my mom won't find it funny, but it's like the kind of humor that you expect, oh, the Facebook mom that also posts the minion memes would find funny. It's just very boring, very a typical, very predictable, very roll your eyes humor for a good portion of this film. And that's so disappointing to me, coming off a of bullet train, which I found hilarious. I loved the humor in that. Maybe it wasn't even the same writer. Let me double check that. Yeah, so it's a different writer because Drew Pierce wrote this and Zach Olkowitz uh, wrote Bullet Train. So it's like, that's once again, a cautionary tale for directors out there, write your own material if you can and if you can't learn how because if you're a director who doesn't write your own movies you don't get to decide if the movie is good or not you can do your best to try to dictate it or pick good scripts but if you're just if you don't know how to write you don't know what makes plots or writing good you're at the mercy of whatever scripts get handed to you and and that's shown here in that bullet train was a legitimately hilarious movie i compared it to like a guy ritchie movie with the fast-paced talking the fast-paced humor the just snappy dialogue really loved the humor of that movie and then in this the humor like i said for the most part is terrible and uneven because like i said you've got like the mom humor there and then the unicorn bit as well as maybe one or two other things is like stoner comedy movie funny which it's like if you found any of the other stuff funny you're not gonna find this funny this kind of reminded me of something like the hangover and you're like what 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 is what this doesn't fit together any good moment in this movie because there were some legitimately good moments felt abstract from the whole they didn't feel like an altogether movie this didn't feel like a solid production it felt like a collection of ideas some of which were good some of which were terrible and most of which were forgettable honestly so at the end of the day watching this movie I, you know, I chuckled, I had, you know, an enjoyable time to a degree watching the romance because not that Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt really make a whole lot of sense as a couple. I enjoyed both of their performances and their characters and what they brought to the table so I could enjoy the romance aspect of the movie. So I walked out of this movie going, sure, I had a good time, but I don't remember most of it already and I never really want to watch it again I won't be like hey bud you should go watch this movie I'm not gonna suggest this to anybody to go watch it unless they're like I need something forgettable 
to see. <laughs> and I'll be like, I have the best thing for you. It's not special in any way. And it's a shame because it really had opportunities to be and treated itself like it was. And then there just wasn't anything of substance there. So, like I said, better than the really bad movie that I thought it could be, but ultimately just a straight, even down the middle movie where I don't care about it other than the one really good joke with the unicorn that I'll be telling people about and going, man, I wish that was in a better movie that made more sense because, yeah, this plot was pretty terrible and everything could have been solved with a phone call pretty early on in the plot and I just it bugs me how poorly it was written and how poorly the dialogue was written. The, the characters make no sense. The plot made no sense. The editing was terrible at times. So bad that it almost was like, I think they forgot to film certain things. It's like the editor wasn't given the correct footage to work with, so they couldn't make the scene look complete. Like, so there's a moment, this is a slight spoiler, but not giving anything away. There's a moment when bad guys run up and tase some good guys. And you see them get tased and you see the bad guys run off and unless I completely missed it, I couldn't tell that they then had one of the characters with them in the car as they were driving off until we cut and showed them. I didn't see her get grabbed. I didn't see anything happen. It was just, oh, now we're over here. Similarly, there was a chase and a guy is driving at full speed. And then the next time we see him, he's driving slowly like he's hiding. And it's like, where did we? We were out in the open and now we're hidden. We didn't get there, we're just now there. And that happened multiple times, that kind of editing in this movie, where I was like, either that was really poor editing, or like I said, the editor just wasn't given enough footage, enough coverage to work with. And that could be bad directing, that could be the inexperience of this director, he's still fairly new, he's really best known for his stunt work and stunt directing than actual directing, so maybe he just is a little bit sloppy still, and I didn't pick it up in his previous movie, but I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but it was terrible. Those moments were really amateurish, and it was just like, that's what is happening here. So, yeah, that's what I had to think. It's really kind of still a soft six for me because I didn't hate the movie. I really didn't. Like I said, I walked out and that was fine but I won't remember anything about it. So I can't give it a negative rating. I don't even wa really want to give it a five because a five feels too mean, too harsh to it. But this movie just didn't do enough with great ideas that it did have. Like I said, there were some good ideas in there. They even parodied Dune, which is a fun idea, but then they didn't do anything with the parody. It's like they just went the laziest route with everything that they did. Not even just humor, plot, everything was so lazy that I just, I, I, it's a shame to me. All right, we're doing this because my camera is stupid and doesn't know how to adjust to light apparently. But anyway, um, his other movies were were rated R for the most part. I don't think Hobbs and Shaw was, but Deadpool 2 was and Bullet Train was. And then this is PG-13 and barely, like squeaky clean PG-13. Like you take out one death, this movie's PG. Like it's barely PG-13. And it really felt like it suffered for that. Like I'm saying with like the mom humor and just the squeaky cleanness of it all, it really needed some grit. It really needed some punch to it that just wasn't there. It was too aw shucks fun and did really didn't leave any impact because of that. It didn't feel like it did anything new or original. So I'm going to get into spoilers for a little bit here, but that was my basic opinion, my basic thoughts on this movie. So if you don't want anything spoiled, you can click away now, but please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks, guys. Bye. So spoilers. Um, I'm going to take a quick break because I'm sweating. I need to turn on the AC. Okay. <clears throat> nice and chilly. <laughs> so, all right, I'll just go through my favorite jokes real quick, and then I'll talk about some other stuff. So the unicorn thing. So he gets, I don't know, some sort of spiked drink. They don't specify what drug it is, but he starts hallucinating uh, kind of like any sort of drug trip movie would, and he ends up tracking down the guy and being like, when is this going to wear off? What's going on? And he says, once you stop seeing the unicorn, you'll be good. And he turns and looks and there's a unicorn there. And then 
that's kind of like, uh, sort of funny, whatever. But what, what was really funny was how they used the unicorn after that for the next scene. It kept just being in the background of shots. Like, he, the very next scene, he walks into a hotel, and the unicorn's behind him. And I was like, that's hilarious, and I love that. That's good. And that's like, I don't know, half an hour or something in this movie. And I was like, that's the first funny joke. Why did we wait so long to be this funny? Like, the rest of the humor is so bad. What are we doing? There's, like I said, the Dune parody thing which was like almost funny a lot of it was also simultaneously like i feel like aaron taylor johnson's character was like parroting matthew mcconaughey while they're doing the dune thing because he's doing the matthew mcconaughey voice and he's talking about how love is like the the one thing in the universe it's like a secret weapon so i'm like is that an interstellar reference are we making fun of interstellar as well i'm not sure but maybe and it's like so that's kind of funny but like i wish they did more with the dune parody because really as far as the dune joke went was we're gonna have everybody dress like it's dune and we're gonna have a soundtrack that's similar to dune and then that's it they don't really like make fun of dune in any way or parody anything about it other than just like oh look dune and you're like ha ha dune what else you know like i was saying like they took the laziest route with everything that they did um, the jokes the writing the plot everything was the most predictable thing that you saw coming there's no suspense at all because everything is so predictable that like and i'm not just saying oh the the main character didn't die i knew that and it's like well duh uh, of course but like as far as like any plot you know it's like you can tell right away oh the producer's behind this she's evil oh speaking of which by the way so okay if you don't know the plot you haven't seen it yet they think that the lead actor which is played by aaron taylor johnson was kidnapped they end up finding out that oh it's because there's blackmail or something on his phone so then they track down the phone they get it and it's a very convoluted couple of scenes which by the way was very predictable is like you knew that he wasn't going to get to karaoke on time i like i even knew exactly how they were going to do it is they're going to have a simultaneous cut back and forth between him running her singing and then when he bursts in the door it's actually timed out differently so that she's been gone a while it's like it's so predictable it's painful but anyway they open up the phone they get onto the phone and they look on it after finding the password which was on a sticky note because everything has to be a callback in this movie there's a million callbacks a million references they're like oh he's always on a hot mic he never knows like oh that's coming back later oh he's got a million sticky notes he always forgets everything it's like memento weird unfunny reference and also oh that's gonna be a callback that's coming back later a million times in this movie but anyway <laughs> they get on his phone and find out that he hasn't been kidnapped and it's not blackmail necessarily, it's he has recorded footage of himself accidentally killing somebody, his, his stunt performer. Also, by the way, it's predictable this whole time because the movie is called The Fall Guy, which is not something you typically call stunt men. It's so it's obvious that something is going to happen where they're going to try to turn Ryan Gosling's character into the bad guy. They're going to do some sort of blackmail or in this case edited footage to make him look like the bad guy, make him take the fall. He's the fall guy. It's like if you put it in the title that's kind of predictable, we know where this is going, but anyway, they do that, and long story short, I just couldn't get over the fact that he didn't mean to kill the guy. So if you've got footage of him accidentally killing somebody, you're, you have proof that it wasn't on purpose right there. You have evidence of exactly what happened, which was they were wrestling, they did a quick funny stunt where he kicked the guy and he was going to go flying back, he hits his head on something and actually dies. Show that to the police, let them know, and I get it. Okay, they don't want the bad publicity for the actor, they want him to keep his career. You have enough money that you can keep this hush-hush. And also, not have him go to jail for murder. Very simple. It turns out, okay, there's more plot. Apparently, he's been doing stuff on purpose. Like, he tried to get Ryan Gosling's character killed at the beginning of the movie. Maybe not literally killed, but, like, teach him a lesson is how they put it, which resulted in him getting his back broken, which derails his career. So, he is doing stuff on purpose, but the ver the raw footage you have does not prove anything nefarious. It simply shows that you accidentally were involved in this guy's death. That does not indict you of murder, 
I mean, you could get convicted of manslaughter, but once again, you are a, like the Tom Cruise, and not current Tom Cruise, like old Tom Cruise of this universe. You are the most famous actor in the world, and you can have that buried very easily with money, you know? You're not going to have your career derailed for this. So it's like the whole plot doesn't make sense because of that, and that is the only reason that anything's happening. That's frustrating to me. It's so stupid, and I get it. People are stupid, but... I don't know, so much of this movie is just happenstance and convenience that it's annoying. And then things just seem to happen. Like I said, any good moment or any interesting moment feels abstract from the whole. And I guess some bad moments too, because so when he first goes looking for Tom Ryder as the character, the character's name, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, he goes to his apartment, he's given the key code to get in, and he gets attacked by a lady with a sword. I'm pretty sure you see it in the trailer after five minutes of fighting. He realizes the sword is a prop, and she's a stunt lady, and then she goes, oh yeah, I wasn't trying to kill you. What were you trying to do? What was that whole scene about? That went nowhere. The only reason that was there was, I guess, A, to be fodder for the trailer because the trailer made it look like it was a big action movie and for that, up until that point, that's like the only action thing that happens and it continues to be like the only real action thing. A lot of it is just like him trying to solve the mystery so that's just stupid but uh b she's there to like give him the information to go meet the drug dealer and the drug dealer is there simply just to give him a key card or you tell him to go to a hotel and ask for somebody and then that person gives him a key card and it's like <sighs> it's all just so meh, like nothing matters nothing's interesting it's all just moments except for the humor because i did just remind myself of the one other really good joke in this movie is so he goes he's told by the drug dealer go to this hotel ask for kevin and when you get kevin order the 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 fruit platter so he does he goes to this hotel he's still very high on drugs at this point eventually he finds kevin and he gets a food platter which he gives him a key to a hotel room so he goes to the hotel room and the key doesn't work so he has to go back and exchange it and i was like that was legitimately funny because like just ah oh, hotel keys never work <laughs> and they're always just it's always your fault you did something wrong with the magnet and anyway that was hilarious i love that kind of offbeat something that throws off the plot something that throws off the timing and just makes you like uncomfortable in a weird way that's that's hilarious to me i really thought that was great but none just not enough of the humor in this movie was that way so much of it was just roll your eyes and ugh okay whatever stupid you know so yeah i don't know pretty forgettable a couple of good moments but honestly like i said i i just forgot about that key card moment until now i had to really think about it to remind myself that that happened because i was like i know there was more than one thing the unicorn thing that made me laugh what well, was it and i couldn't remember until i really thought about it so yeah um not not great dialogue is terrible a lot of exposition that's just stupid plot doesn't make any sense none of it should actually happen it requires you to turn your brain off too much and i get it most movies require you to like suspend your disbelief a little bit this asked too much and i could not <laughs> i couldn't do it so yeah it's a pass from me totally innocent totally fine movie but so much wasted potential in there and ultimately pretty boring like i mean speaking of wasted potential stephanie susan this character does nothing She's there for like one scene, gets kidnapped, kicks a guy, and then she's in the mid credit scene as well, but like, I don't know, just so much wasted potential. This movie is so forgettable and so boring and so bland, so you can skip it. It's a lazy, you know, watch it for free kind of movie. I wouldn't recommend spending money on it, but maybe, you know, when it's on Amazon or whatever, you could spend the three, four dollars to rent it. But why? Why? <laughs> why bother? So, yeah, you can skip this one. Uh, makes me want to go rewatch Bullet Train again because maybe I'll be more forgiving of the writing in that now. But anyway, that's why I had to think. What do you guys think, though? If you've seen it, let me know in the comments below what you thought. Also, don't forget to like, share if you're new here. Subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.